Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. As daily load shedding continues, President Cyril Ramaphosa finally named his electricity minister and the IPP office released a battery storage tender. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss these developments. Hi Terence. Hi Snow. After weeks of speculation and waiting, the president finally appointed a minister for electricity in the presidency. That's correct. So, uh, Minister Hussein Saramakhopa, the former Tswane mayor, who's been in the presidency for some time now, really overseeing infrastructure and inf in investment in infrastructure, overseeing the SIP project, the strategic integrated projects. He was named, I think he was, his name was very widely speculated that it would be him. It has turned out to be him. And he is an engineer, a former mayor, so he's able to navigate both the political side as well as the technical side. And this is a very a technical heavy uh, sort of solutions that, we, that we're going to require to solve this deep and long running load shedding crisis. And Makopa immediately moved to diffuse possible tension with his cabinet colleagues. Yes, I mean, I think when the electricity ministry was announced in the States of the Nation, there was immediate concern. You know, we've already got a public enterprises minister overseas who's got shareholder responsibility for Eskom, and we've got an energy minister who oversees the policy environment. And there was a view that there's going to be a, a lot of um, chefs in the kitchen and uh, people standing on each other's toes. And we know that both are very senior political figures, both Praveen Gordon and Gwede Mantash. Gwede Mantash, a very powerful figure within the governing African National Congress. So there was a feeling there's going to be sort of turf wars and turf battles. And it's going to be very interesting to see how the new minister navigates these. Immediately, the energy minister put out the signal that this is a project manager role. And it seems very much to me that that is, in fact, the moniker that uh, Ramakhopa himself is now adopting. So it's going to be really tailored towards being uh, on implementation uh, at a very uh, sort of micro almost level. So while there's a lot of interest in what powers the minister's going to get, and I think those are still going to be very important to see uh, what those powers are and where those powers are drawn from to be given to this new minister in the presidency, I think it is going to be very much a focus on implementation. What can we expect from the minister over the coming months and weeks? Well, he's been quite vocal and he's given a lot of interviews, so we have quite a good understanding of how he sees it. And I think that project manager role he's sort of adopted. So he says he needs about seven to 14 days since his appointment to just get his uh, a sort of implementation strategy in place. And he made it clear that it's, it's very much at an Eskom level, it's very much at a down to a power station level and almost to a unit level. What can the power station, what do the power stations need from, hi from him to try and make sure that they can get a sort of recovery in the very poor performance of these coal fleet all the way down to the unit level. In some way, instances, he might be told, well, there's nothing we can do about this unit and we must actually take it off the books. But we'll wait and see uh, around that. But that's going to be a big focus. He's also meeting with energy intensive users uh, because those we know have a big pipeline of projects, uh, nine gigawatts of um, embedded generation, so-called, these are sort of really big, potentially utility scale projects because there's no longer a cap on how, you know, without having to get a license, you can now proceed with any size of project and still wield through the grid. So that's, that will be a big counterparty for the minister to see how those projects can be accelerated, as well as the IPP community that bids into the public procurement round. That's really become shaky. And although we, we had uh, a number of projects uh, that have now moved to preferred bidder stage uh, from bid window five, which was the first bid window that came following a very long delay, uh, you know, disruption to this public procurement of renewable energy, uh, those, many of those haven't reached financial close, so trying to get those across the line, plus the bid window six, only, only a handful that got through bid window six, even though that round was expanded to 4,200 megawatts, less than 1,000 megawatts of solar was eventually signed up trying to get those to financial close. That's all on the supply side. Then on the, the demand side, I think he's making clear that he wants to try and unlock this rooftop generation, batteries, inverters, solar panels 
on households, but particularly sort of large shopping centers, retail centers, uh, large warehouses. I think there's a lot of potential for those to to start generating electricity in a in a context of massive grid constraints. So, where you're wanting to wheel uh, electricity, say from a utility scale project that you're doing as a large energy intensive user, that grid you're hitting that constraint all the time. Whereas if you're in sort of the distribution area in the load centers, that constraint is will be easier. It's, it's still going to be a navigation act and it's still going to be difficult for the operators of the system. But that uh, that is in a very much a low hanging fruit and I think one that the minister's talking about, shouldn't we have a warehouse where we can have enough solar panels, enough batteries and inverters so that doesn't become a supplier of these, doesn't become a constraint. But I think Money is the key constraint for most people. It's expensive to put in, so we need a financing model, really. And then we can talk about whether we need to warehouse panels, etc., and where we're going to get them from. Uh, so we need to get that financing plan, especially for poorer households. They need to participate in this. They can't be excluded from it. Otherwise, there's going to be, a, I think, a backlash. Um, and we could even start seeing this becoming a new site of crime where people are stealing solar panels and stealing batteries. So we need to make sure that everyone is participating in, the, in this transition. And that really, I think, where if there's going to be incentives and really dripping rose type, and so that's really, it has to be at the at sort of community ownership level in the low income households. I think there's a lot of incentive for middle class households really to invest, even though the, there's no dripping roast from the budget. Uh, only 15,000 uh, uh, rand that you can recover for your panels and only on your panels. But I think if there's going to be a bias, it must be to a bias towards some sort of community ha uh, ownership, especially in low income areas. Separately, there's also been some movement on the long awaited battery energy storage tender. Yes, this is important and uh, the industry has been waiting for this for, for, for many, many months. Was supposed to come out last year, it never did. Uh, finally, all the approvals are now in place. There was a view that it might be expanded beyond the 513 megawatts uh, of capacity that it's going to that was going to be procured through the first round. But in the end, that's the figure that's been used, or that's the the, the amount of capacity that's going to be used. The the, the tender is looking for four hours of storage, so it's about energy value of over 2,000 megawatt hours minimum. And it's going to be spread across nine substation sites, all in the Northern Cape, all selected by Eskom. This is important because I think this is about grid strengthening, but grid boosting, where batteries are going to be used quite strategically, where in areas where really potent renewables resources, but no evacuation or very limited evacuation capacity. So putting batteries at these various substation across the Northern Cape could unlock some of that uh, pent up capacity. So now we'll have the process. We know that the deadline for bid submissions is 5th of July. There'll be, as usual, a bidders conference ahead of that. I think the disappointment, as always, is that the bid documents are only available for those who are prepared to pay 25,000 rands to see it. And I think given that it's so novel, I know we have had the Eskom battery tender, which is also ongoing. We've had the first phase and the second phase to come. But I think it would have been useful, I think, for these tender documents to be more accessible or at least more of the detail be accessible so that people can really understand what's available here. So I think storage is going to be a major part of our future. Um, but anyway, it's been since 2011 where the documents are bought. But maybe there's a time, a chance now to, especially with novel technologies, to try and rather recover that through the another point in the bidding process rather than right up front so that we have better visibility and people that are not necessarily bidding but are modeling the system can also have access to these documents and understand what it's going to mean. But be that as may, at least it's movement and uh, so we've had movement as you say on the uh, electricity minister at last. We've got the state of disaster regulations which are being still resisted in the courts but at last visibility of that, it took quite long. And now finally, also some movement on a very important transition supporting component uh, of our procurement, um, our public procurement, which is the battery storage side. Thank you.
That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.